In our last video, we looked at how to record journal entries for retail or merchandising entities. In that, every time we recorded a sale, we also had to turn around and record the cost of goods sold. The question comes up, how does the company know what the cost of goods sold is? Now, if it's a small company, it's pretty easy. We know exactly what we bought each item for. But let's talk about Walmart. Does Walmart buy all the inventory on their shelves at one time? Well, Walmart has a ton of different locations, so they have a ton of inventory that they're bringing in. So that plastic bowl you went to buy may have been bought in one of six different transactions with the manufacturer. So it may be a little difficult from them to see a one-for-one -one perfect relationship because one, they have so much inventory and it gets shipped out to so many different stores. So what do they use? Well, there's several ways that we can monitor or track our inventory and those are called inventory cost systems and there's four primary one is specific identification now that one we will not cover too much because it's a perfect one-for-one -one relationship if you sell large homogenous items such as a car dealer each of their cars has a spe specific VIN and they know exactly how much they paid what the invoice is for that car same way with the mom and pop jewelry store that has one-off items. They know exactly what they purchased each of the items in their jewelry store for. But larger companies like Walmart and Target and K Jewelers or Zales, those types of entities buy large quantities and multiple times in a year. So it may be difficult for them to do specific identification. So they have to use one of the other methods. The first one is called first in, first out. Or FIFO. Now, what does that mean? Well, the first ones we buy are the first ones we sell. So the inventory, the older inventory always gets sold first, followed by the newer inventory. All right, the next one is called LIFO or last in, first out. That's just the opposite of FIFO. That means the most recent purchase is the first that's sold. Now, LIFO is allowed under U.S. GAAP, but not necessarily under other GAAPs like IFRS. All right, so last in, first out, the last ones purchased. So the most recent purchases are the first ones we sell out. And then the last one is the weighted average cost, or sometimes you'll just hear it termed the average cost, but it is a weighted average because we don't always buy the exact same number every single time we buy goods. So the weighted average cost. What this does is takes the average cost of the, all the units you bought and applies that as you sell. So it doesn't matter when you bought it, you just take the average cost. All right, so let's look at an example of these three, and let's start with FIFO. Pulcher owns and operates Ron's Sporting Goods. During the month of June, the inventory had the following activity. Beginning inventory was 50 units at a cost of 12. We purchased 60 at 13, 130 at 14, 100 at 15. During the period, we sold 220 units for $21 each. So notice, we did multiple purchases here, but we sold 220 units. So when we sold these 220, what batch did it come from? And that's the reason we need FIFO, LIFO, or average, because here it's hard to see. There's not a one-for-one -one relationship. So we have to have a system in place that follows through. So the first thing I like to do is always do a little sketch here. And I'm going to say our unit cost, so our units times our cost will give us our total cost, or TC, total cost. So one, we're going to start with our beginning inventory. What did we start with? Well, we started with 50 units at a cost of $12 each. So 50 at 12 gives us total cost of 600 for that batch. Then we had three purchases, one, two, three. So we're gonna keep them in order, one, two, three. The first purchase was 60 units at 13 each. So when you take 60 at 13, that costs us $780. The second was 130 units, and we paid 14 for each of those units. So that would have cost us $1,820. And then finally, we bought 100 units, and those 100 units cost us $15 each for a total of 1500 
So that means during the period we had 340 units available to our customers and the total cost of our inventory was 4,700. All right, now we've got that. We'll use that for LIFO, FIFO, and average, but let's start with FIFO. Under FIFO, it says calculate the ending inventory, cost of goods sold, sales revenue, and gross profit. So let's start with cost of goods sold. Under FIFO, when you sell goods, you're going to start with the oldest. So let's just put under FIFO. All right, you're going to start up here at the oldest and you're going to work your way down through the inventory. So let's start with the oldest units first. Well, we have to account for 220 units first and foremost. So 220, that's our sold units. We're going to start with our oldest. We've got 50. Did we sell all of those? Absolutely. So we sold all 50 at 12. So we sold those. That would be a cost of 600. Okay. Do we still need to account for more? Absolutely, because here we've got to account for 220 units. So we're going to go to the next batch. How many do we need there? Well, there's 60 in that next batch. We need all of them because we need to account for 220 units. That's only 110, so 60 at 13. So we sold all of that batch. So that's 110. We need 110 more because 120 minus 50 minus 60 gives us 110 left. Do I have enough in the third purchase? I have 130. So we're not going to pull all 130 there. We're only going to pull 110 of that third batch at 14. And when we do that, we get 1540. So our cost of goods sold, we add these together, we get 2920. That is our cost of goods sold. So when we went to do the journal entry, that's what we would record. So that answers this first one. Now let's look at ending inventory. Well, notice we had 220 units sold. We had a possible of 340, and this is cost of goods available for sale here. So these are the goods available. This is the cost of goods available. So a couple of ways we can do this. There's a short way, and then there's a longer way. Let's do the longer way. One, we need 120 units in ending inventory. You're like, wait a minute, how do you know that? Well, we had 340, we sold 220, we have 120 units. Where does that come from? Well, notice we sold all of this batch and all of this one. We have 20 left in this batch, so that would be 20 times 14. That gives us 280. And then we have all of this last batch left, 100 at 15, 1500. So our ending inventory is 1780. Now there's a quicker way to find that. 4700 in total cost minus cost goods sold of 2920 would also give you 1780. The sum of these two numbers have to equal your total cost. All right, so that's our ending inventory. I'm going to do that EI ending inventory. All right, sales revenue. Well, sales revenue is easy because we sold 220 units. So I'm going to do it over here, sales. We sold 220 units times $21 per unit. So that's going to give us our sales revenue here of 4620 Okay. And then the last thing is our gross profit. Gross profit is net sales. So to get gross profit, you take your sales revenue minus your contras. Remember, we had three contra revenue accounts, sales returns, sales allowance, sales discounts. In this problem, we had none of those, so we don't have to worry about it. That gives us our net sales. So sales revenue of 46.20. Contra revenues were zero, so that means our net sales for this problem is 46.20. Be careful, that's not always the case. You have to look to see if you had any contras. Then you subtract from that your cost of goods sold. Okay, cost of goods sold here was 29.20. That gives us what we call our gross profit. Okay. So our gross profit here is going to be 
1700. All right, so that's how we calculate cost of goods sold. This is the amount we would record for the sales revenue. So if you were to journal this, what would happen? Well, one, assuming account, you would hit AR for 4620, and we would hit sales revenue for 4620. Remember, in perpetual inventory, the minute you record the sale, you have to turn around and record the cost of goods sold. So we'd record cost of goods sold for 2920, and we would reduce our inventory by 2920. So this is how this calculation plays into the entries that you've done up top. Now, I don't know if it's a cash or credit sale. It doesn't really matter. It could be AR or cash. The point of this is showing you why or how they're calculating that cost of goods sold for that journal entry. All right, you will have to do that in your final project for the class here for my class. So pay attention. All right, calculate the ending inventory, cost of goods sold, sales revenue, and gross profit, assuming LIFO. Well, let's start with the easiest one first, sales revenue. LIFO will not impact sales revenue. LIFO simply gives us our cost of goods sold. So the sales revenue here would still be 220 units at $21 each or $46.20. That didn't change. What will change is our cost of goods sold. So let's do our cost of goods sold. CGS, cost of goods sold here. Under LIFO, LIFO is a little different. So let's go back up here. LIFO, LIFO, we start with our newest purchase, the last in, and we work our way backwards, okay? So be really careful with that. To get cost goods sold, you're going to start at the bottom and work your way up. So we sold 220 units. That means we sold all 100 here at 15. So well, that's going to cost us 1,500. Now we need 110 more units, or excuse me, 120 more units. Do my math right, because we sold 220. We've accounted for 20 of, 100 of them, so we need 120 more units to account for. All right, do we have enough in this batch to cover it? We do, so we're going to pull 120 at 14. And we do 120 at 14, that gives us 1680. Now, if we accounted for all 220 units, we have. And if we add up our cost there, that's 3180 in total cost of goods sold, CGS. Say that's our CGS there. So here, instead, we'd still record the sales revenue at 4620, but now under LIFO, we would record the cost of goods sold at actually 3180. Now, what about our ending inventory? Well, let's do the shorter method on this one. Notice we had 4,700 in total. So what we can do is we can take the 4,700 and we can subtract out the 3,180 because we know that's our cost of goods sold there. And when we do that, we end up with 1,520. That's our ending inventory. Now let's verify that. Notice we sold all of this batch so we can mark it off. We sold almost all of this one, but we have 10 left. We have all the 50 and 60. So if we were to look at this, we have all 50 left at 12. We have all 60 left at 13. In that third batch, we only have 10 because we sold 120 of the 130. So we have 10 units at 14. So what does that give us? Well, that would give us 600, that would give us 780. And then 10 at 14, that's 140. If we add up these three digits, indeed, we get 1520. So it's two different ways you can calculate them. In the end, though, that's our ending inventory. All right, gross profit. We've already explained up here our net sales. So that's where we're going to start. Net sales is 4620. Then we're going to subtract out our cost of goods sold. Here it's 3180 under LIFO. So you're going to take net sales minus cost of goods sold, and that's going to give us a gross profit of $14.40. And I'm just going to put GP, gross profit equals. So ending inventory, $15.20, cost of goods sold, $31.80, sales revenue of $46.20, and our gross profit of $14.40. That's if the company uses LIFO. Okay. All right. The last one is the average cost. Now the average cost in my mind is the easiest. 
because you're just doing an average. So you just need a quick little formula. Okay, our formula happens to be total cost divided by total units. Okay, I say TC over TU. TC is total cost. TU is total units. So, what's our total cost? Well, we found our total cost to be 4,700. We're going to divide that by the total number of units we have of 340. And when you do that, you get $13.82 rounded. Now, here, all we're going to do is find our cost of goods sold. We sold 220 units. We're going to apply an average cost of 1382. And when we do that, we're going to get $3,040.40. Now, when you use this method, you want to make sure for any inventory you actually subtract because this is a rounded number, so you'll mess up if you try and do the units. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 47 in total cost minus the 30, 40, spot 40. And that's going to give us our ending inventory of 1659.60. Now our sales revenue is the same number. So sales revenue we go in and do at would be our 220 units times 21, which again is 4620. We don't have to go too far there. And the last thing is our gross profit. Gross profit would be the 4620 in net sales. Let me move this. Hold on. Ah, there we go. To calculate our gross profit, I got a little carried away. Our net sales minus our cost of goods sold. Our cost of goods sold is $3,040.40. And, and when we subtract that out, we should see that we have a gross profit of fifteen seventy nine. So now I want to put my GP here. fifteen seventy nine sixty. All right. That's going to be the end of this video, going through how to calculate cost goods sold, ending inventory, sales revenue, and gross profit using FIFO, LIFO, and average cost. Y'all have a great day. See you next time.